Well, gentlemen, it has been an amazing year for nerds like us. You can say that one again. Gentlemen, it's been an amazing year for nerds like us. Kind of walked right into that one, Sam. Re- okay, yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> but in all seriousness, <laughs> pop culture fans have been fed very well very in well. 2022, and it's only going to get better in 2023. We'll look back at our favorite moments from this year and look forward to everything we're excited about in the new year. This is Tatooine Suds. It's true. It's true. All of it. What is the name of the Porg on the Millennium Falcon? Force is strong in my family. What do you think his name is? <laughs> it's a big moment. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. <laughs> Maybe Turbis? Do or do not. There is no try. Turbis? Pablo, if you're listening to this live stream, that Porg's name is now Turbis. It's a good Star Wars name. We're not done yet. These guys recorded an awesome podcast called Tatooine Sons. Everybody was lit. So, so God of War Ragnarok, yes. is that what it is? Mm-hmm. So now you finished, the, you, were, you I, came in late to this, right? I did come in very late. I mean, I saw that the, the new one was coming out and the old one was on sale. Not the old one, the, the 20, 2018 18, one yeah, yeah. was on sale for 10 bucks. And okay. I'm like, okay, I've heard so many good things about it. And so I decided to play it and I finished it the fastest I've ever finished a game in like three days. It was really so fast. It, was, it was insanely fast. And so I've been waiting to get this new game, almost been getting spoiled on social media or youtube or anything just because i don't even like 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 facebook i don't interact with anything on facebook but they keep showing me stuff i keep having to just scroll by but the new game so far i'm not i don't think i'm super far in but it's how long is the campaign supposed to take the campaign just in and of itself is 25 hours wow how many hours do you feel like you're into it ah I'd say four or five. So you're, you're, you're into it well enough to know. Okay, so first impressions of the game. God of War Ragnarok, go. Uh, it's, it's a lot darker than the 2018 one. Really? There's a sense of finality to it, of course. Uh, okay. But, you know, the father-son bond is even stronger this time. And it's great to see that play more into it. That's cool. It's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it ends up. But I'm glad I haven't gotten spoiled. Sam, do you have any interest in God of War, God of War Ragnarok? I mean, I'm... I'm familiar with the story just because Nathan's been keeping me updated. It's certainly very, very interesting. I like the world and and the and the the father son aspect of it. Sounds a lot more interesting than the original games. Um, so it's definitely interesting. I don't think I'd have any interest in playing it, um, but hearing what's happening from Nathan is is more than enough fun. That's for cool. Me. So that's yeah. awesome. Well, welcome uh, to Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast. It's been a while. It's been like a it's month a minute, since we yeah, recorded, it's but been it, busy we'll explain too. a little bit more. We are the only fan podcast to name a canon Star Wars creature yeah. and to be endorsed by the writer and the director of The Last Jedi and Glass Onion. Ooh, good that movie. was so good. All right. I still got an hour to watch because I fell asleep because <laughs> I was exhausted. Really Not because it was boring. No, I just was exhausted. Like, it's been like, cra- It's bef- been that kind of December. That's why this is the only episode that we released. Before we started the movie, it was what? Eight o'clock, seven, seven thirty, or something. Past my bedtime, way past your bedtime, (laughs) way, way past to start a a two and a half hour movie, right? Especially after when you Christmas, yes, and when you were like, uh, "Hey, let's watch that." I was like, "Are you sure you're gonna be able to stay?" I'll be fine. I'll be good. And then, like, like an hour and fifteen minutes into it, it's saying, "Like, hey, Nate," and I look over. I was falling. I was dying, and I was like, "I'm just not even gonna try." Not even try. I'll finish it sometime uh, with it. But anyway, what do you guys think about it? It was really good. I mean, you get halfway through the movie and you're feeling like, dang, this movie moved fast. We're already like at the end. And then they hit yeah. you with another twist the right there. The last hour and a half is basically... Don't, no spoilers. All the stuff not that yet. I missed. No spoilers, well, not yet. At okay. least for dad. And, and you know, we don't want to... I was wanna... just going to say it's the reveals. Sort of. Yes. It's that's the like the, re- entire the entire last hour and a half, half, is... half is just a ton of reveals yeah that's all uh, yeah it is. okay well i'm excited about it so, so what is your thoughts generally on it because you just- oh it was fantastic i like how he didn't copy the first movie but he still had the same charm and feel and it was still just as interesting without being a straight up repeat yeah that's mm-hmm. cool very much so awesome so um 
we're just way off track. We are. We Ooh. do believe, though, that pop culture is the <laughs> mythology of our generation, that there is a story that is written on our souls and that these myths speak to that story. And that is why we talk about Star Wars and Marvel and DC and all of the epic franchises. God of War Ragnarok. Yes. Yeah. It's an epic franchise now. Yeah, very much so. That you love so much. I am David. I'm the dad. Hi, dad. I am honored to be joined every, well, it's most weeks. Yeah, it's like month now. But anyway, we'll talk about that, too, My uh, by my two amazing sons. Sam, what are you talking about? Yeah, it was hard to narrow down my uh, my top list for this year and next year to just three things. Yeah, so we're doing a special episode today of our highlights from 2022 and what we're looking, what we're looking forward, to. forward to in 2023. So that was hard for you, Sam. What about you, Nate? I mean, while this year was great, I think that next year is going to have a lot more things I'm excited for. Mm. Which is a, it's a surprise because there were some big DC there moments. Was, there, was, there was like one huge DC thing I was looking forward to this year. Yeah, and, I'm sure we'll end up talking about that. was about really that. about it. That's it. So uh, for me, um, I don't know how this is the case, but it, could it be possible that my best of 22, uh, 22. list, mm-hmm. 2022, yeah. yeah, my best of 2022, I can't speak today, list, 20, 20, 20, 22, the, my best of 2022, there we go, list might not include Star Wars. Might not. I we'll have to wait and see. I don't think mine does. That's very interesting. Well, we want to wish you everyone listening to this, because by the time you hear this, it'll be a couple of days after Christmas. But we haven't had a chance to wish you a Merry Christmas. So Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas um, to all of you. Um, we hope that you've had a wonderful time uh, with your family over the yes. past weekend and celebrating um, uh, the the reason for the season. You know, for us as, as being followers of Jesus, it's always a big holiday for us. For Part sure. of the reason why we had to take a lot of time off. We just had so much going on um, with that. But also we're getting ready ready to go into a happy new year and you're listening to this before that so happy new year yes happy uh, new year. see that too we didn't die may you <laughs> exactly Yet. that's sort of sort of how we end <laughs> these years now right you know we survived another one. no nuclear uh, war no apocalypse cool. um at this point um with it but we uh we obviously wish you the best and and uh, god's blessings on you over 2023 as well so thank you so much for listening to the show for making tattooing sons a part of who uh your fandom and your your nerdiness and uh we appreciate that follow the show uh, we are going to have we kind of teased a couple of them, but we're going to talk about it at the end. We're going to talk about some changes in our schedule uh, in 2023. We'll save that for the end of the episode. But let's just uh, let's just go right into it, BB Nay. What do you mm-hmm. got uh, going on tonight? Well, a lot of great things came out this year, and DC really showed back up this year in the movie mm-hmm. side of things. My favorite TV series is probably going to be shocking, and next year is going to be a big one. So let's talk all about that. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Yeah, I can fly. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. The people in this room, which one is A, wearing a spangly outfit, and B, not of use? There's only one god, man, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. Batman has no limits. You, you, you did get a lot of non-nerdy stuff. You, you turn into a jock um, a little I, bit. N- I, I, a all your, nerd all of your sports. Colorado abs stuff. Yes, I got a lot you of did Colorado get a lot avalanche of clothes. stuff. Christmas. I got a lot of avalanche merch, but I'm happy about it. You I'm, got a I'm few always, comic, like some omnibus I, comic I got a couple of collections of collections. series well, that I need to read to understand what's coming up. what happened is we were all just so excited he had something other than comics. We that we just got him, him a bunch of abs stuff. Because like mm-hmm. we knew you didn't have any of it, so we were like, just get him abs stuff. It was, so. it was great. I mean, go abs, go. Yeah, go abs, go. Yeah, anyway, we go. go. If our team could heal up. Yeah, exactly. Three for the three uh, favorite things. This is just hot. These right are into a it. few of my favorite things. Mm, kind of. It's Christmas song. Yeah. It, well, at least people well, make it. They, I don't they know play why people Christmas. make it a Christmas song. And it's it, not. And it applies. So yeah, it does anyway. apply. Yeah. Okay. So for the movie, this is going to be a huge shocker. Favorite movie of 2022. Mm-hmm. All the movies. What is the it? The Batman, of course. Whoa. No, no shocker there. Um, it was, of course, a fantastic movie that I saw. I think the total of it was like eight times in theaters. Yeah. Wait, so what? Yeah, yeah I went to it a lot. It. Yeah, right. oh, right. going yeah, to see yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Other yeah. people just like I would have gone by myself. Now, but yeah, I went to it a lot. But first off, what did you all think of the Batman? And where do you think the story could go from here? Oh, well, I'll be honest. Um, 
this would probably be my favorite movie of 2022 if you didn't pick it. But um, it was... You just wanted something different to talk about? Well, but the other movie is okay, a, okay. a big one for me, too. Okay. But um, I absolutely loved it. It absolutely just shattered my expectations. Um, and they were fairly high going into it. Um, it was the perfect Batman film, perfect detective and comic book movie. Um, so I, you, you really couldn't have asked for anything better, but where's as to where it'll go. I mean, we really have nothing to go off of. There's a lots of hopes, you know, that people have. So a lot of people want to see Mr. Freeze. Um, I'm hoping for the court, the obviously. Court. Um, you know, so there's just a lot of speculation and rumors and hopes and dreams, but we've got nothing to go off of. I'm hoping to time jump. I'm hoping we start to see the startings of the court. Um, I hope the startings. Well, there's st- we're starting to see the, the oh, okay, then popping up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm hoping for a, a Robin at some point, oh, wow. some sort of Robin. I want Maybe real, like I want a real Robin. Yeah, a He's good have to be a, a young Robin. Robin That's what Robert Pattinson said. He's like, I, if we're gonna have Robin, I want him to be a kid. I want it to be the real Robin from the comics. I want this to be two or three years in the future. Yeah, the okay. one. It'll be yeah, fun. That's be fun cool. see. Yeah, I, I loved the Batman. I mean, I've gone on record multiple times about how much I enjoyed it. I um, was one of the countless millions who kind of scratched their head and was like, what are we doing with this movie when it was announced Robert Pattinson was going to be playing the Batman <laughs> really? and Bruce Wayne in it? Um, but, you know, I only because I only I'd never even watched a Twilight movie, but, you know, I only associated it's very him, different from Batman. Yeah, with Twilight. But then we saw Tenet. And he we was did. in that. And he, he was, did, he and did. it was. So I, I was like, okay, maybe he can do this. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you kept, you know, coaxing me along, helping me understand um, uh, with it. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I, you know, you talk about it, Sam, from a film perspective as far as where things are going. Um, I'm excited. We're getting a couple of series eventually. We are um, oh, uh, yeah, pretty yeah. soon. We've got the Penguin series with Colin Farrell. It's about film mm-hmm. um, with that, and then there's a the Arkham Asylum one is is that's being gonna be produced right now. It's it's kind of in the works. If they, I know I probably have said this on the show before, but if they find a way to pull off a Harley Quinn origin story as part of the Arkham Asylum series, like make her, like we saw in the animated series. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. um, With it, I think that would be fantastic. Just make Harley Quinn a bad guy. Yeah. yeah, I hate seeing the anti-hero Harley Quinn now. I mean, she was a bad guy at the beginning. Just at least let, let her, her be a bad guy for a little bit as yeah. a bad guy, so that the anti-hero version means that much more instead mm-hmm. of just throwing her into that. But that's good. Why is um, you know obviously it's the Batman and mm-hmm. all of that. But what was the major reason, BB Nate, why you feel like this has got to be the top? Of, of your list because I mean I just can't see any flaws with it I, I've I've watched it enough to notice flaws if there was some and I mean even just for as long as it was and how different it was than what we've seen before it was still just really well done and really good and I always think back to like I, I could see it being made as a comic mm-hmm. I mean Every single shot could be a, a panel. Frame in a, a panel in a comic. It, yeah. it, it was it was a comic book movie down to its core, mm-hmm. and that's you don't you don't really see that all that much. I mean, and compared to some of the other comic book movies that came out this year, like Thor: Love and Thunder, and some of those things, it, it feels like okay. Well, there are still good comic book movies that appreciate their source material now. Mm-hmm. So that was a that was a big deal for me. Yeah, it is curious to me how I think that if you take people that are not I have to be an MCU fan I'm a Marvel fan right Mm -hmm. if you take people that are more um, superhero movie fans comic book movie fans nerd culture fans and just they're not like tied to one franchise Mm -hmm. or another and you ask them what the best comic book or superhero film was you're going to have a big debate between the Batman and Wakanda forever this year mm. in 2022. Yeah, definitely. So, um, with that, I think that that's, that's good for films. We need another franchise to be at that level of storytelling mm-hmm. um, with it. All right. All right. Well, for a TV series um, this year, I'm going to have to give it to the, the Grand Tour season five. We only have we've one. We've never talked Grand Tour no, on this show. No, we've only had one episode so far come out in season five. It was a movie. And kind season of five? Just specifically season well, it, five? It came out well, this year. Well, I mean, it came out this year. So okay. okay. I'm, I'm giving it that. But I discovered it over pneumonia. Oh, okay. So 
that was i mean i had nothing else to do and no other shows to watch and i'm like hey i'll try it out it looks fun you were super sick i was so sick but it was it's a a fantastic show i mean what is it about that show that you love so much it is just it's just so much fun. I mean, okay. you, it's hard to say that for media, but everything about it is just fun and enjoyable and feels fun to watch. It's like Impractical Jokers in some ways. Why do you say that? Because, because it's not. It's, just, it's not Impractical no, Jokers. No, it, but it's it's the, but, the, the friend group that's been okay. friends for decades now just doing crazy things like – having an RV trip across an entire country and one of them decides that he's going to make his controls on the roof and then his brake goes out (laughs) and all that kind of stuff. It was, it's just so much fun to watch and it's enjoyable and it just always feels refreshing, I guess. It's just three old British guys being stupid and they're, and they are pretty irreverent. They're very irreverent, especially on the, uh, when they used to do the, the conversation street topics, the, they went, into very irreverent stuff but it was always a lot of fun to see where they went with it but it's it's just a a great series all in all but for favorite moment this year i'd have to give it to the andor interviews and screeners because i really did enjoy andor a lot and it was awesome to see the last four episodes a little bit early and interview some of the people behind it because you could tell their passion behind it was so strong and they really did appreciate this show and after i got to finish it i understood why they loved the show so much because it is a fantastic star wars show and I mean, there was nothing about it that I thought was wrong. It was just it. It was dark and different from anything else we got in Star Wars, but it really fit Andor's character and where he ends up in Rogue One. I can't wait for season two, but we already kind of know y'all's thoughts on the Andor series in and of itself. But what did you think about getting the interviews and the screeners oh, okay. and all that stuff? What? How did that feel? Well, for me, that was a huge moment for our show. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it, 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 a year earlier was the the for only you know the first moment like that in the show when we were invited mm-hmm. to get screeners for Star Wars Visions and interview um, James Waugh and um, I'm sorry I cannot remember the uh, Japanese side of the production um, side of that I just Kanako Shirazaki I think is what it is but I'm trying to sounds remember. right um, I'm trying to that's the name that popped into my head and I'm trying to to I apologize I don't have that but um, we got that then we got the Lego um, yeah holiday the, special holiday the, the, uh, the Terrifying yeah, it was Tales, ter- terrifying tales. Yeah. and then we've got summer vacation. So we got some of those things, but they were all sort of the animated side, which mm-hmm. makes sense because our show kind of was was born out of our, your guys' mm-hmm. love for Star Wars Rebels right. as well as The Last Jedi and stuff like that. So it made sense for that. But when... Um, you know, we got the opportunity to get the Andor screeners and then to interview the different uh, production people involved in that. That was a, you know, that's the first live action thing that we've ever been a part of when it comes to, it was you know, the, mm-hmm. the, like a, a, like a news level uh, conversation with it. So that was super exciting. Yeah. It's it, for me, it was just really cool to like see the people who are behind these series. I mean, you, we talk about writers and directors and producers all the time on this show for different series, but you know, being able to actually interact with those those people and 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 see the minds behind these franchises and 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 shows we love was really a really cool experience. You can tell that they are masters at what they do, um, and it shows in the uh, in the series. I mean, as we talked, those last few episodes were just some of the best Star Wars we've gotten mm, agreed. ever. Um, and even even though it didn't have lightsabers yeah, yeah. in the Force and Jedi. Right, and it's Sith a good and, cheese And the Emperor pizza. Darth Vader. It was a really great piece of garlic cheese bread. Yeah, it was just <laughs> cheese pizza. But... Um, no, it was it was really cool to to pick their brain a bit. And again, it is just so surreal to think that our tiny little show was able to absolutely to have that opportunity. Definitely. That was awesome. All right, now we gotta we gotta look forward to twenty twenty three a little bit. Yeah, so there's a lot. There is a lot to. to look forward to, but kind of all of these are like on the same tier. I'm so really? excited for all of these. One kind of a little bit more. This one, okay. Oppenheimer. I'm so pumped mm. for this movie. You're, it's, Christopher Nolan it's is Christopher your guy. Nolan. It's I mean, gonna be a blast. You, you have his name on anything and, and I'll be excited for it, but it, it's a different type of movie than what he's done before. It's a biopic thriller drama movie, which is I don't think he'd ever, I'd ever think he would kind of go into that part of cinema, but 
he is and it looks great and the no cgi that he's trying to do with the big things is gonna be <laughs> with a nuke is crazy but that it was a joke that wasn't a joke exactly right it was so, um and he's gonna use practical effects for the nuclear blast which is crazy so. and i cannot wait for it and it yeah. just looks so good and so are, are y'all looking for doppenheimer and i guess what are you looking forward to the most oh it? i mean yeah i'm i'm super excited i mean i was i was interested before the trailer just because i knew it was it was nolan he really hasn't missed yet um but after that first trailer and after the the one we got in the imax screening Mm -hmm. great uh, we'll talk about that later movie moments right um it i'm actually very very hyped for this i like how it's almost like a a horror movie like a sci-fi horror like there's this imminent event coming you know like that they're they're all worried about and and they're preparing for it you know it's it's just a such a a neat way to tell that story because i was worried it would just be like a documentary about oppenheimer but it's more about the bomb than anything and the effects Um, from it and you know the toll it takes on oppenheimer and and the the way it changes the world because it absolutely does um so it's i'm very very excited for it um when does it come out again i know it's in 2023 it's like the end right oh it's july July. 21st of next year or something like that still a ways away though okay it is you know for me oppenheimer i'm excited about because you mentioned this is kind of like a horror movie it is Oh, it's a and, real life horror and movie. because it's a horrific event. Yeah. Um, to think about. And the the concern I loved how in the trailers, we'll t- I, again, we're, we're going <laughs> we'll to mel- meld this all together. I have a feeling, but um, they they allude to real terror on their part, mm-hmm. even in the production mm-hmm. of this and testing that they weren't sure what was going to happen with it. So it was uh, yeah, it's, it's it looks fascinating. Uh, Christopher Nolan is a, is a genius director. I can't wait to see what he does with it. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, but for the next thing, I'm very excited for Jedi Survivor. Fallen Order was fantastic, uh, of course, and this one looks somehow even better. The file size doesn't look better. That's going to be... It's like 100 gigabytes, Jeez. but we'll, we'll be fine. So you're going to have to delete everything off everything of your off. computer? Yes, everything, yeah. but or, or just or get more storage or something. We'll figure it out. But I'm super excited for this game. I'm excited to see where it goes, how it's going to tie into the larger canon of Star Wars, That's, because yeah. it kind of felt like its own legend story somehow in star wars at the with the first game it just felt kind of disconnected from everything they have with, with a, well i mean it had characters in it but mm-hmm. every legend is one yeah day. and or didn't good but jedi fallen uh yeah, fallen Order exactly did, so. but uh dad are you actually gonna play this one or just <laughs> kind of watch the cutscenes online i would love to say i'd play this one i there's no way i'm gonna end up never, playing this one never <laughs> so I was well, like, is it a time issue or a a game skill it's a, it's a gameplay time all of it combined mm-hmm. right i'm gonna invest all of this time into this game that's gonna take me twice as long to play as it would you guys and i'd be frustrated pretty much the whole time because i mean i don't know how to use i i'm not good at it you know so. i think there might be solutions for that because i know there's kind of been a trend recently in games. I know God of War actually won an award for this, um, where they're increasing accessibility options. Um, you know, not only for people who. So I need four year old mode. Y- yeah, basically, basically, they have they like have a mode that. where it makes combat super simple. It'll give you hints if you're confused on puzzles and stuff. They make it to where anybody can play the game if yeah. they want the story. Um, and I have a feeling that Jedi Survivor will probably follow that. Most trend. likely. No. So there's hope. I'm, yes, I'm, you know, as, sh- as there should you. be, this is Star Wars. Right. And Star exactly. Wars is all about hope. But so. I'm very excited for it. Sam, are you excited? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I still want to know who the dude in the test tube is because um, they are really, really teasing that. They are, uh, especially, especially in the Game Awards. They yes. had a whole display of it. Um, so that that's definitely going to be something interesting, I have a feeling. But all in all, just even as a game, it looks like it took what worked for fallen order and expanded on it um and upped the cool factor uh so to speak so yeah i mean i'm i'm definitely excited I'm, I'm curious to see where it fits in the timeline how it fits with the larger story i think if any if at any point they were going to tie this story into the larger universe this is the the time to mm-hmm. do it definitely um doesn't this take place at the same time as kenobi it does yeah so same year. 
Um, this is definitely maybe we a, see some of the, like the 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 underground railroad thing for Jedi. Def- yeah, uh, I, was thinking, uh, I, I could definitely see that. Um, the path is that what they called it? I think so. Yeah, yeah, th- uh, yeah. Or I think it was the way. Yeah, I think it might have been the way. Yeah, you're um, right. in Kenobi. Yeah, so definitely excited to see where they go with that. Definitely. Um, and for the last thing, I'm just excited to see the new DC Universe plan. The, You're like one of the only person who's excited right now. I'm genuinely excited. Uh, you Explain know, why. Because it's chaos right now. It, it is absolute chaos. Um, well, outside of James Gunn and yeah, Peter, Sa- you know, Peter Safran. Yeah. They know what they know exactly they're doing. what they're doing. Everybody else is in chaos. Ex- everybody else has no idea what's going on. It is honestly overreacting to everything oh, yeah. that's going on. I, I wait, 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 wait fans nerd culture fans overreacting it's crazy i don't understand you know i i absolutely adore the snyder's your dude the snyder versus your world i love it i loved henry cavill as superman i genuinely think he's the best superman we've gotten you would have been thrilled had james gunn been like 100 restore the snyder versus on exactly i would have been thrilled but i'm thrilled that he's not going that direction because honestly it's a mess and it would have been difficult to figure out how to make it whole again and keep it from being confusing and even when he's like getting rid of all these people and getting rid of that past universe it means that he has a genuine plan for a good story that's Mm. coming out soon and he has he really does want to make this story as good as it can be and you can tell he i mean he's been working on for what the past two months almost now and just he's been, been officially just been constantly like meeting with directors and writers and figuring out he still wants ben affleck to direct a movie to be just has to find the right one and he still is talking about henry cavill being another character later down in the storyline yeah, yeah. and so mm-hmm. it's not over we're just beginning to be getting a different type of dc universe that actually brings in comics and tv shows and games which like what a star concept wars. like a star wars and so it is interesting how they're kind of following that pattern is they, what i get a feeling they're, they're doing. definitely even are. more so than marvel and the oh mcu because oh, the marvel yeah. comics and the marvel games and all that stuff all, is completely still separate. All disconnected. disconnected yeah mm-hmm. i mean even across the spider-verse and into the spider-verse all that stuff is disconnected yeah, exactly so mm-hmm. what do y'all think will be in the new dcu and what are you most looking forward to in this i'm just looking forward to a cohesive story <laughs> yeah honestly yeah, I get I it. I mean, that's really all we can hope for at this point. I'm a little disappointed we're not going to get Henry Cavill. It was, it's kind of funny they like made this big deal in Black Adam that they brought him back, and now they're just kind of they're kind of dropping that off. But I, I have faith that they know what they're doing, and I'm, I'm I, I know they they are uh, they they do know what they're doing. I'm curious to see if they're going to follow the normal, you know, big three. I guess Batman the Trinity. Yeah. Have you know? to. Or if they decide to go completely different, you know, like have night Nightwing be a lead or something. And, and how yeah, we, we could be okay with Christopher Sean playing. Nightwing yeah, in live absolutely. Action, so. You know, I, I don't know if they go a completely different route and it's changing. So, cause DC's kind of been doing the same thing over and over again and not being able to get mm-hmm. the wheels. Definition of spinning. insanity stuff. Yeah. Right. So, but all in all, I'm excited to see where it goes. Yes, for sure. Um, I'm super excited for what the new year will bring, and I can't wait to see where DC goes from here with the Batman and Joker mm-hmm. 2. I'm not going to say the actual title. I don't know how to pronounce it, but everything that happens. <laughs> I can't oh, yeah. It's that French oh, and it's title. a musical. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait for that. That's it's just crazy. So, so weird, but so. I can't wait to see what happens in yeah. the new year. That's awesome. Good segment, BB Nate. Thank you. Good, been good, to, good to hear you guys hear, hear a segment again. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a while uh, for us to be able to do that. So, all right. Um, we're not talking about a character or even a planet or a ship on this week's is it canon let's see how nate and sam do with equipment rp it's it's a role-playing game it's got to be an rpg (laughs) this is not going to go the way you think all right for everyone that is uh new to the show or new to this segment of the show um here's how this works i give a description of something i find on wikipedia and then um sam and nate make an argument uh for why they personally believe it's canon or legends and why sometimes they agree sometimes they disagree sometimes they're right sometimes they're wrong we'll have to see this time it is uh, uh rather generic it is a portable plasma 
shield. Okay. I'm going to say something right now. What? It's canon. It's canon. And I think we both know yep. why. Yep. All right. Continue. Continue. Right. A portable plasma shield consisted of a small <laughs> bracer mount, mounted plasma shield generator that, when activated, emitted a radial shield capable of blocking physical and energy attacks, offering near impenetrable defense while requiring much less weight and bulk than a traditional shield. A portable shield could be further modified to be stronger and larger, though full body protection was usually prohibitive due to the need for an oversized emitter and power cell. While active, um, a portable shield could interface with the soldier's weapons as soldiers had to strike around the solid edge of the shield. Though solid, the weightless shield could not be used as an infect- as an effective melee weapon. Two models of the portable plasma shield were the Millicore PS8C Plasma Buckler and the Crail 99 Guardian System. All right, you guys both jumped right in there, right? I, it's, to, it sounds it's like canon. what the Death Watch use. Yeah. A- and even like Battlefront 2. Well, that's where I went too, but that was a full body shield. This is different. This is like a radial shield. So you're thinking it's saying. I'm thinking it's what the Mandos use in like um, the Clone Wars and stuff. Okay. You know, they yeah, have that, that, worked, that tiny that little too, shield. Yeah. I because it said it, it's bracer mounted and they have to work around it. I think that's what it is. I think it's canon. You're that, saying the, canon? Yeah, I'm saying canon because that yeah that's that's what I thought too. I thought of immediately. I thought it was Battlefront, Battlefront as well. Because that's a pa- plasma shield that you can. It's portable. It, everything mm-hmm. about it fit, but I guess it's just a different type. Yeah, I think yeah. So you're going with canon. Can both yeah, canon, well. mm-hmm. and you're both going with the same idea as far as why? I, we're we're going well. for it. All right. Yeah. Uh, it is from Collapse of the Republic. Oh. Collapse of the Republic is an era source book RPG fantasy flight game Star Wars role-playing game system featuring brand new source material compatible with each of Fantasy Flight Games' three Star Wars role-playing lines. It is meant to be a spiritual oh. sequel to Rise of the Separatists with Collapse of the Republic covering the second half of the Clone Wars while Rise of the Separatists covered the first half. The book was released in june 28th 2019 and is thus considered huh. canon hey, so it is canon still, we're still right it is an rpg okay. like your initial instinct was i want to look look it up to see if it's got like if it's what i'm thinking it is well you do that after the show so yeah that's good all right because you have a segment you have to leave mm-hmm. you do so I do. go ahead let's do this yeah well this year was an incredible year for movies and entertainment so it was pretty hard for me to narrow it all down but it was even harder for me to narrow down um what i'm excited for next year but i made my best effort so let's talk about it all right be on your guard there are older and fouler things than orcs in the deep places of the world All right, then. Keep your secrets. You're coming to us. He says the footsteps and steps and steps. There are many magic rings in this world, Bilbo Baggins, and none of them should be used lightly. Right, yeah, I don't talk about it much. Don't get to do it much, but uh, I love playing airsoft, so I got a whole bunch of clothes too. But it's all tactical camo stuff. Although you could cosplay as 1981 action figure <laughs> GI Joe. Yeah, probably. Um, like the one with the round helmet that sticks around his ears and all of that. Well, I'm not I mean, sure. It's, it's, it You'd just, have to pull up a picture. I, if I, I'll pull up a picture of it. Yeah. You'll be like, oh yeah, that's yeah. who me I am. I'm yeah. gonna go cosplay at that in the next Comic Con. <laughs> too. So anyway, hopefully gonna go play in the next couple of weeks. That'd be fun. Yeah. But all right. All right. Well, um, for the movie, it was going to be the Batman, but I I thought about another movie that came out and this one might be a little surprising for y'all. But I think my next favorite was probably Top Gun Maverick. Really? Um, I don't remember where I heard this described. Um, and I think it's it because weird. it's a Star Wars movie, right? Basically, it's basically a Star Wars. Um, movie, so. I don't know where I heard this described. And I think it was used under a different context. But like sometimes, you know, you can order. Um, and this is not to do with a menu, so don't get that confused. Um, <laughs> That's a good movie. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you can get the most craziest meal ever d- executed perfectly. And it, it's true through multiple courses. But sometimes you just want a perfectly executed cheeseburger. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. It's just a cheeseburger. Plain old. You like Some great it. Great fries. Yeah. And it's just it's just a good old cheeseburger. Big old giant Coke. Right. That's what Top Gun Maverick okay. was. That, it was just a fun movie. It was exactly what you were expecting going into it. 
no surprises S- executed perfectly it was awesome the dog fights were super cool it had weight to it even more so than the I first loved movie. the trench run the trench yeah, it run he trusted it had the all the tropes too you know he was on his motorcycle you had the game on the beach i mean it was it was top gun you know 2.0 um but it was exactly what everybody wanted and i think that's why it was Maybe one of the highest sometime soon. yeah it was one of the highest grossing films of all time because it was just a fun movie in the top five what did y'all think about it nate no, i really enjoyed it i mean i only saw it twice in theaters but it was it was really good like you said it was just a ton of fun and while i wouldn't put it as a great movie or i don't even know if it would be like a like, cinematic no, experience no, I, 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 never, mean, I, I don't know if i'd even put in like my top three this year but still it was a fun time at the movies and that's something you don't get all that often anymore and it was just really well done well executed great acting great effects everything about it was just well done Mm -hmm. and there was really no complaints that i Mm -hmm. could give about it but it was just a really fun movie it was a good cheeseburger yeah it was a good cheeseburger. well you know it's it's good enough that we went out of our way to drive to pensacola Mm -hmm. um to find it when it was re-released in imax because we wanted to see it again Mm -hmm. in imax Mm -hmm. and so um you know it may not have been in your top three or anything like that as far as movies but you but it was a great fun movie experience Mm -hmm. and you you enjoyed watching it of course that's cool Mm -hmm. i loved it i mean it was fun for me from it uh, because it, you know, I'm I'm a kid of the 80s, right? So Top Gun was like such a f- pop cultural phenomenon mm-hmm. uh, in the 80s. I mean, that's kind of the first thing people think of when they think of Tom Cruise from that era. Right. With it, even though he'd been in a few movies before that, which were hits um, with it. But that, you know, that's a, a lot of fun. It was fun to watch it and then see them literally from opening credits just embrace yep. who this movie need, it was or what this new movie was supposed to be and never apologize for it. And then like you talked, it's got all of the tropes almost within like, you know, the exact same moments. Mm-hmm. Like you could lay the two movies, uh, Top Gun and Top Gun Maverick over on top of each other right. and scenes are happening at the same times um, with it. But it worked and it was it was fun because it was pretty early on that people were like this is a star wars movie it's like, <laughs> i said that after our first exactly watch. we all said it um with it so um it was it was fun for us to uh, to watch i loved it so yeah um as for my favorite tv series i uh, this will come as a surprise to literally Shocker. nobody um but it had to go to lord of the rings rings of power um i have we are amazon shills we are we are shills i'm getting my paycheck last comes in sh- um last Thursday. two shows were amazon all right what oh yeah because <laughs> your uh, show is amazon here. too yeah. isn't it <laughs> Oh, that's going to get weird only. when it gets to my segment. Maybe that's um, what the the weird iPad case was. That's it. Was it. Just a, yeah. it was that, that was our paycheck. Was it. it was an iPad case for the iPad. Some we weird don't random have. iPad iPad came from Amazon. Uh, case, not iPad, but a case for an iPad came to our house. And we don't even have an iPad. Nobody can figure out why, including <laughs> Amazon. But anyway, anyway, um, I had some real high expectations going for the series going into it, um, being the resident Lord of the Rings uh, super fan, um, and it well exceeded them um the last couple episodes were just off the chain um it did everything that you wanted it to do and more um but after having some time to let this series settle a bit it's been multiple months now what do y'all think where does it sit for y'all nate oh i really liked it Uh, i can't wait to see where it goes while this season had a lot to it it still felt like the prologue to the story that we have to get yeah um that's not a problem they can have an amazing prologue but i mean we haven't seen anything yet uh we set up the characters put the board the pieces on the board and now we just have to see where it goes from here and yeah how everything ends up i mean mordor is now a thing and all this stuff feels like all the it it feels like all the locations are set all the characters are established but I mean, now we got to understand where's the journey from here. We have four seasons left. We know that. Jeez. So that's great. We have a lot of story left that we can tell. So I'm just excited to see where that goes from now. Yeah. Dad? I'm, I mean, I, I hadn't had a chance to even rewatch these, but, and I know you've watched some of the episodes. Yeah, there are times, times. I've just yeah. thrown them on yeah. um, while I'm working on other stuff. Yeah, I, I love this series. Um, um, the... 
just just the the beauty of mm. this series, the the score of this series. It's oh my god! It's one of the first times. I mean, we weren't Game of Thrones people, right? And I know people have said this about Game of Thrones. It's you know, it's it's cinematic. It's you know, it's big. The effects and all of that. Well, we don't watch Game of Thrones, and there's reasons why we don't watch Game of Thrones. For primarily because I don't know watching incest and <laughs> yeah. is not it's on our radar um, really. and, and it, you know and that, that's that's just not what we're going to do um with it but the reality is this we got to see that level of production in a tv series which even exceeded you know stuff that we saw in star wars oh, yeah. you know the closest thing we've also seen to that was was the production value on andor um mm-hmm. for us um with that i so i absolutely loved it i'm going to have you save the answer to your question until a little later in the show um so you can move on to the next up just trust me just move on to the next up. <laughs> okay um as for my favorite moment it Definitely had to to go to the uh, the Willow premiere. Uh, never in a million years yeah. did I imagine that we'd be able to go to a red or green carpet um, premiere. Uh, you know, it was such a surreal experience to be walking that and seeing all the stars and just like we're in a premiere in L.A. just because right. we happen to have a podcast. It was it's something people only dream of and we got to actually experience it. Um, what, what were you going through your guys's heads during this moment, dad? You know, um, <laughs> I think that the highlight of the red carpet for me was when we saw David Collins mm. on the red carpet and he was, so we were like trying not to be those guys. Right. 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 Where you go up and start talking to somebody and randomly. And, you know, we try to introduce ourselves and strike up a conversation with somebody that probably has that happen to them way more than they'd like mm-hmm. um, with it. Um, but after, you know, about 15, 20 minutes of seeing him being so gracious with everybody else doing that um, with it, I was like, I'm going to do it. Let's go have a conversation. Let's get a picture with him. He was doing that with others but the highlight for me was when i mentioned our podcast mm. name and he knew who we were yeah to the extent of of talking about you nate mm-hmm. because he and i had had a dm conversation at one point about you wanting to go into mm-hmm. sound in the film uh, industry and he remembered that and we talked about it and then you guys ended up talking a little bit about how he they had created a whole new audio track for uh yeah. you know production for oh, the premiere yeah, yeah, so that yeah, was yeah. more cin- cinematic and theatrical in nature and and things like that and for me to stand back as a dad and watch those kinds of conversations and those moments happen it was it was uh, that's what was going on with me. What about you? Yeah, I mean, it was just crazy. I mean, we showed up, we were waiting in line, we got our badges, and we walked in. And the first thing we see is a bunch of fans behind those barricades. Like that just, from a year ago yeah, earlier, we were the fans behind we the were barricades. Those people, and now we're walking on the other side. It just felt like like a full circle moment right there. Yeah, like it just felt insane. Like we were at the No Way Home premiere, and we're like, oh, that would be so cool to walk that red carpet as a complete dream as a complete wish and then we show up and we see those people wishing the same thing mm. that we did a year ago and it was just like wow yeah. we 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 got to this point and it was just like I, I'd, I'd be fine if this, and we don't deserve it. No, no, absolutely you know, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna apologize for our show. I don't think I'm not saying that we don't put out a, a quality show or a, a show with great conversation, mm-hmm. great production value, all of that. I think we put out a, a freaking good show, okay. <laughs> and I'm not trying to to be rude about that, but at the same time, you know, we don't have a ton of listeners, no. we don't have a ton of you know uh, gravitas or or anything like that. Um, and the reality that we got invited was a dream, mm-hmm. and um, it was hard to make it a, a, a reality to get out there. It was expensive for us to get out there and get back. I and missed school, you know. It, it was it was hard to do, but we weren't going to pass up that moment. Heck no, um, for anything. Um, because of that, and we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later. <laughs> Am I stealing well. a lot so, of your stuff? Yeah, huh? go for it. Yeah, let's just move on to 2023, okay? <laughs> well, there's quite a bit in 2023 to look forward to, as Nathan mentioned. Um, but <laughs> one thing that's probably mostly exclusive to me that I'm really looking forward to is um, is Transformers: Rise of the Beasts. Uh, you know, I, I I was a huge Transformers fan when I was a, a little kid, and I still love Transformers. Um, but there's not been much to get excited for lately. Uh, I like Bumblebee, but this movie seems to be combining everything that makes up my Transformers fandom. You got G1, um, 
like Optimus and all of that, right? You got Beast Wars, which is that weird series that came out in the 90s. That <laughs> That's I, your Star Wars. I, I mean, your Transformers. Right. That's when you fell in love with I fell in love with Beast Wars for whatever reason. I had all the toys. Um, and then the Babers, because I got into those movies when they, they came out. Um, and then The Last Night came out. <laughs> and and yeah, it was, yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> but it, it's combining everything that makes up my Transformers fandom, I guess. Nate, I know you're you're looking forward to this because we watched the trailer together at Sam's Club when it came out. But Dad, what do you what do you think about this, Dad? You know, uh, it's 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 I, I'm not like it would never have ended up on my list, and I would have never even dreamed it ending up on anybody's list for us um, really? with it. Um, when I saw it on when we started the segment, and I saw it on there, I'm like, oh, that kind of makes sense uh, based on what you described earlier mm-hmm. with that. But um, I'm, you know, will I be there? Heck yeah! Opening night, IMAX. You know, I'll be there for that <laughs> um, with it. But I, I'm hoping that the excitement of this rubs off on me before it, it releases. So. <laughs> well, I think it's just a lot of nostalgia. It is a lot of nostalgia point, for you. What about you, Nate? What do you, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pumped for it. And it was kind of being the little brother, whatever Sam had on. Yeah. I watched. <laughs> so I watched a lot of transformers. I watched a lot of beast wars. And so it became my thing too. I, I really do enjoy transformers. And it was always like, like when Sammy and I were house sitting at one point for dogs, we had a Transformers movie on. It was, I think, Dark of the Moon, just because yeah. it was on in Revenge of the Fallen. And then we watched the first one. We and it's like it's just because Transformers is cool. And we went to Bumblebee opening day. We used yeah. to play and a lot of games too. We we played the games a lot as well. Yeah, we really did play a lot of those games. And it's just it's just a lot of fun. I mean, Transformers has always been. There's not a huge plot to it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just side. Um conversation but another funny thing is nate and i i don't know if we've we we haven't mentioned this on the podcast because we haven't recorded since then um i was just doing a mental check but we were watching the uh the game awards nate and i and uh we went into it and i'm like i hope we get an announcement for a new transformers game it's been right, a while yeah. since we've gotten a good transformers game right and then we're sitting there and this trailer comes on because there was a new game release every other two minutes it felt like there was a trailer it looked alien stuff we're like this is kind of cool i wonder what this will be and then the um the title card at the end shows up and it's uh transformers re rebirth something like that something like that uh, reawakening and nate and i both just sit up in our chairs and look at each other like no way um so it's, it's kind of a fun year to be a little bit of transformers fan this little this little pocket of fandoms getting some love that's awesome um and then the next one i think everybody can oh, yeah. can yeah, say I'm excited oh, yeah. is, for this it's is it coming out next year it's slated for november 2023 really right now. that may get pushed it's like November 3rd Most or something. likely will get pushed. It'll probably get pushed. But as of right now, it says 2023, so I'm, it's going on my list. Um, but it's Dune Part 2, and I was excited for Part 1. It was interesting. The trailers made it look cool, um, but you know, there, I didn't know hardly anything about right. it. Didn't watch the original, but it completely caught me off guard. I never thought I would be so intrigued in the world. The, the Just the universe of the movie itself was so... And rapture for me. There's a for me. game coming out about and the, it. And there's a game and a there's series. A series. Too, yeah. um, it was just so fascinating to me that I instantly fell in love, coupled with Hans's amazing score, the great Hans actors, um, interesting story. It was a hit right, right as I walked out of the theater. Um, Nate, you picked up the books mm-hmm. um, not long after we watched this movie to, to start reading them over. Have you read any more of the series? Yet? I've I've read a little bit more of it. I'm at like Doctor Ua's betrayal right now. Okay, um, uh, but there, it's a difficult book to read. Well, um, yeah, there he, he's, he's Frank Herbert's basically the J.R.R. Tolkien of sci-fi. Sometimes he's a little worse. I mean, <laughs> there was a tw- like a twenty-page chapter that was you know like the meeting that they all have with uh, Paul, okay. and the Emperor at the right. table on Arrakis. Oh yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was that, and you think that it would it was short in the movie, but in the book it was this twenty page chapter <laughs> of them talking about the specs of each ship they had down to the last minute detail. See, that sounds but that's interesting for me because I, I want to know all the. Info. I was reading it, I was interested, but I'm like, oh my gosh! But getting, it is a little I'm getting bit of a tired. Like I'm like, oh come on! I just want like I wanted to move forward. Um, it's a long book. I'm getting back to it, but it's just kind of I always have this. Uh, 
influx of comics and they always take priority. <laughs> so I always and there's been a lot of comics and there always will be because yeah. new series decide to show up the audacity. How are you feeling about this? This new movie? Yeah, I, you know, um, I, I already revealed that I didn't even have a clue it was supposed to come out in 2023. So, um, you know, not nearly as excited about it as you guys are, but I loved the first one. I'm excited to see how the second one goes. I was really intrigued in the first one with the sisterhood. So I'm excited to see about that oh, yeah, series. Mm-hmm. It's one of the things on HBO max that didn't get canceled. So that's exciting. <laughs> Um, uh, with that, so I, I, you know, and that takes place like the origin Hundreds story of, years, of that, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, it sister. doesn't have, um, his mom, I don't think so. No, no I don't think so. Oh, yeah, it's supposed to be different than that. Hmm. So, uh, excited. Like I know the, that they've been filming like crazy. Mm, um, and I think so. that isn't filming for isn't, the um, movie wrapped. Um, Yelena Cordova isn't, or no, yeah, you, yeah, Florence Pugh, Florence Pugh, oh. yeah, she's gonna be in the second one. Oh, really? At least she should be. And isn't Christopher Walken the, the emperor? emperor? Mm-hmm. That I'm not sure how that's going to work, but I mean, then again, you you said <laughs> you weren't sure about uh, Robert Pattinson as yeah, Batman, so, so maybe Christopher Walken will work. But yeah. and then last thing I'm excited for in 2023 has got to be uh, Mando season three. That or it was between that or Ahsoka, but I had to go for Mando because. I like Mandalorians. Um, but th- this <laughs> next season looks to really dive into what it means to be a Mandalorian. This is going to be one of the the deepest storylines I think we've gotten out of this series so far. A lot of It's been a lot of fan service. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, now that this Grogu one, is with Mando. Right. He's back. They had. I mean, that's basically the entire purpose of the Book of Boba Fett series, by the way. It wasn't, yeah, it, it, it really was. It was like, we need to make sure Grogu gets back to Mando, so we'll because create a whole first, movie around it. The so. other two seasons were, oh, we got to chase and get Grogu, basically. Um, so I'm interested to see this it's really been the Grogu show. Now it's focusing on Mando, like yeah. what uh, what he's going to have to deal with. So I'm very excited for that. What are you guys hoping to see in this next season? You know, I, I am hoping to see more Mandalorian culture and how that all works out. But I'm also hoping to see, we know season four is going to be the end of this series, right? Mm-hmm. Season four is supposed Season to be. four is the, the end. And we have Ahsoka coming out and we have Skeleton Crew coming out mm-hmm. as well. And so I'm really hoping we see a tease of those two shows coming in for a big end game kind of season. Is Skeleton Crew in the same timeline? Mm-hmm. Oh. It's the same universe. Okay. And the well, my, yeah, my Mandoverse. Right. My big yeah. um, okay. you know theory that can go wrong and probably will go wrong. I, I do think that the Skeleton Crew land on an unknown planet and land on the planet that Thrawn and Ezra are on. And then that's how they're introduced into the Mandoverse through Ahsoka and all of that. Yeah, and they have to idea. take them in because Jude Law is character has some importance to and he's a pretty good looking man <laughs> you, if you say so yourself so, yeah. um, but <laughs> I think that there's a lot that will happen I just I just hope to see how they're going to make season four feel like the end in season yeah three. Yeah, set it up for for finale. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about Mando. Uh, I mean, I loved the first two seasons. It's been forever. Yes, since the Mandalorian season two ended, December of twenty twenty. Wow. I mean, he he was in a lot of Book of Boba Fett, but it was not. Well, the that same. was basically Mando two point five. Yeah, but. it was like Lion King one and a half for <laughs> right, Star Wars. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so. It felt like it. <laughs> But no, I'm serious. I mean, I'm excited about it. Um, there's so much coming out uh, Star Wars related in 2023. Uh, this is one of those that you're that I'm kind of like, that's really cool. I'm ready for it to happen. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go March 1st. But then I think about other things that are happening in Star Wars in 2023. And I'm like, oh, I like this more. And I'm excited about this. And for all this the other reason. things happening in March. <laughs> and we'll, we'll share. Oh, my gosh. We'll so share a little bit March. about that. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's there's so much to look forward to next year. We're going to have to uh, really pick and choose what we talk about on the podcast. Um, but I guess that's a, that's a good problem to have. Absolutely. A very good problem. It is. Um, good segment, Sam. Thank you. Good segment, Sam. Appreciate you uh, working hard on that. That's awesome. Um, let's talk some movies. Uh, the studios really don't have a lot of confidence going up against Avatar, way of, uh, The Way of Water, at least in the theaters yet. Um, uh, so we'll talk uh, about a couple other things. There's a lot of important oh, trailers to discuss, so we'll talk about a few of those We don't have a next. podcast for this long. Right. We have a lot of trailers. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be next on Movie Moments. At last, we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last, we will have revenge. So no new releases this weekend. No, it's there's like a, like a handful in limited release, and it literally says on the release cards... 
for Oscar consideration. <laughs> like that's the only reason they're getting released <laughs> in theaters. So. Well, now yeah, that, that was the uh, new release segment um, <laughs> for, for trailers. So that, that includes Babylon, right? No, Babylon already came out. Oh yes. Yeah. That's right. Nobody saw it though. No, it was so. just for Oscar <laughs> Not, uh, consideration yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first trailer 65 looks fun. Weird. Weird. Uh, but Adam I'm, Driver. I'm interested. Space, I'll watch it. Of course. Sci-fi. Dinosaurs. Time or travel. Jurassic Park, but with guns. Yeah. In space stuff. In space. Yeah. Hey. And Kylo Ren. And Kylo Ren. I like Maybe that's where he goes when he dies. Yeah. And he's getting redeemed in this world. So this is purgatory is, is what is. you're saying. Oh, okay. okay. For okay. Kylo Ren. So. Kylo All right. Ren. Sure. Yeah. He's um, got to save the little girl. It's like his, he's like projecting that. Onto the little girl that's like actually Ray. Uh, that's a little weird because he had a thing for Ray. Well, um, so right. anyway, that got so that another uh, Never mind. another weird <laughs> kind of a trailer. But we got the Mission Impossible Seven Part One, Dead Reckoning Part One. Uh, a little bit of a stunt featurette that was kind of nuts. showing Tom Cruise and how he did the uh, the motorcycle cliff base jump thing. That was insane. And then he gets done doing it, and he's like, "I can, I can do, do it better." better. So he does it again, like 20 times. Yeah. They show it. <laughs> Literally, it is he is an, adren- an adrenaline junkie. Yes. And he, he realized can. he can do this and survive it. So he's just going to keep doing it over and over and over until they make him stop. Until <laughs> right. we run out of motorcycles. Right. Um, exactly. With it. Um, but it looks great. It's super exciting. It lo- that always. looks like a fun movie. It's yes. going to be a great the, movie. The trailer itself that we saw was looked interesting. Mm-hmm. It's so. going to be a great movie. Yeah. Yes. Um, for a couple, I guess it's two trailers. It is two trailers. We had the general release Oppenheimer trailer come out. Yeah. Looks great. Um, very basic teaser trailer, but then you get into the IMAX trailer, and there's a lot more story mm-hmm. to dive into with that. A lot more conversation, more characters, more characters. Yes, we see Robert Downey Jr.'s character, we see Emma Matt Blunt's Damon. character, Matt Damon's character. Mm-hmm. We all see all of those, but as always, I mean, the the writing is top notch because it's, it's it's from Christopher Nolan, and one of the the lines in the original trailer is great. It's like. They won't fear it until they understand it, and they won't understand it until they use it. Mm. And so it's just this. I wonder if Oppenheimer really said that too. I wonder. Like it sounds like something. It sounds yeah. like it would, but it just. I mean, oh. you could obviously see the terror in. Yeah, right? and, and we talked about like that the on the part earlier segment, where uh, Matt Damon was like, "There's what's the safety on this?" And and they're like, "There's a small chance that the atmosphere might light on fire, but uh, it's just a small chance. We're good, <laughs> like, right? And destroy the earth, so. right? Right? Right?" right. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. It's, yeah. And we had the Across the Spider-Verse trailer, too. Oh, oh that's yeah. true. It looks yeah. great. That looks good. A lot of fun. We had the Indy 5 trailer. Yeah, there's been a lot of trailers we had since the, the, since the, the Guardians, last recorded. The, the Guardians of the Galaxy one. Fa- uh, Volume 3 trailer. Yes, the Guardians 3 trailer, which looks depressing. I'm just going to cry for on May 5th yeah. or May 4th. Yeah, It'll be like the entire movie. Just, just crying. Yeah, that's not that looks sad, but it does look sad. Anyway. But uh, for box office results this weekend, Way of Water, Avatar, Way of Water, still yeah. say it's strong, which is not surprising. Fifty six million on a weekend when theaters were devastated by the weather, uh, very yeah. much so across mm-hmm. the country. So, so fifty six million domestic, eight hundred eighty million worldwide. It's already almost across a billion worldwide, that's which is pretty solid, great, and it's but underperformed in China. They said it has, but really, we, it won't cross the two million, two billion. It no. might. Be. So we'll have to wait and see. We'll see. <laughs> Puts in boots, last wish, 11 million. That might domestic. clear a billion. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. A million not. worldwide. You know, not a horrible It's getting opening. amazing re- reviews. Yeah. But it loves and, it. and fans. Not a horrible Better than for Avatar. an animated movie. But they're talking about it's like a, a like a resurrection of the Shrekverse is oh, what they're I, using, we describing. Need to see. Everybody this said out? that. The, we gotta go tonight. Everybody said that the, it's um, the Logan of this universe. <laughs> Look, it, they're like it's, it has that's got weird it has like okay. dark themes in it well if you think about it like he's like shrek's gonna die get shot in his sleep and no, there's scene, no shrek and we're just gonna... but it, i mean if you think about it he's like out of his lives so he's like almost you know he's actually got to be careful with what he does much like logan he can't yeah, heal anymore yeah. and, and then i want to dance with somebody seven million domestic 10 million worldwide that's a kind of a that was not good that was not good, good for that movie and then babylon 
three point five million. Well, Bob Lawrence not in the top three. We no, we'll talk about that. Top. No, I just want to throw that in there. You just because <laughs> you is it, that it, that it 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 uh, slightly. So you, don't feel, you think that that the, the movie going public decided to steer clear of a movie that had multiple orgies and three hundred um, f bombs in it? I guess so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, also, why. it just doesn't look interesting, and it's three and a half hours long almost. Are you what? Serious? So yeah, I don't think anybody really Jeez, wanted can't to see complain that. about Avatar, and then. the critics don't like it, so it didn't even work on that level. Right. Okay. So um, I don't think it'll be getting nominated for any Oscars. So. Well, it, well, it may. It, it got nominated from Golden Globes, so we'll okay. um, we'll have to see. All right. Um, all right. Well, thanks for sharing. Mm-hmm. There you go, Dad. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, uh, you guys all know how much I love Star Wars, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like, good. It's like it's a big good. part of my a big part of my fandom, right? Like, a little bit, probably a, the primary part of my mm-hmm. fandom, right? <laughs> Shockingly, my 2022 favorites aren't from a galaxy far, far away. Not even Andor. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Rebellions are built on hope. Force is with me, and I am with the Force. If you live long enough, you see the same eyes in different people. Yeah, so for my, my Christmas gifts, what did I get? I got stuff for the podcast for primarily. You right? did. Yeah, yeah, we're going to try and do the car thing that you wanted to do. So you know like um, James Corden. Carpool dr- karaoke. Carpool karaoke. Well, yeah, we're going to do that. Jerry um, Seinfeld's uh, one where he's oh, like. Oh, comedians in cars getting coffee. That's a great a show. Great show. We're going to do that. We're going to set up a rig like that in our car after movies. Um, because like, from like Pensacola, because yeah, the, the, the best. Co- well, even even the 15 yeah, minutes home, we've had some good conversations uh, from the Daphne one. But our, the best conversations we have about movies are the initial conversations after we leave mm-hmm. uh, in the car. And we don't want to like try to set up a rig and have a conversation outside the theater because it won't be natural. It won't be what we normally That'd be do. weird. Yeah. Um, but if we're in the car and driving home doing mm-hmm. what we normally do, it's going to be the, that natural conversation. So we set that up. I'm getting a new webcam so we can have a little bit more video stuff going uh, with it. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what I that's what I did. Nice. So, hey, cool. all right. Looking back at 2022, um, you know, it's interesting how we we're on the same page with some different things here. BB Nate, my favorite film of 2022 was The Batman. You um already mentioned that's your top 20 uh, film. Uh, it could have been all three of us if uh, I didn't switch mine for 2022. Right? Exactly. It's not a surprise on that. But uh, here's why it made my list. First, um, it's a great film. Uh, it's true to the Batman. Um, it, but it's also not a superhero movie. It's a mm-hmm. detective mm-hmm. movie. Uh, it's detective uh, comics um, type stuff. Second, I was uh, absolutely scared to death going into this film because you were absolutely so excited I was. Uh, about it, BB Nate. I didn't think it could possibly live up to your expectations. And instead of that, it exceeded mm-hmm. them. And then finally, I saw you step into a much more sophisticated and mature way of communicating about pop culture uh, because of this film. You actually took over the dad moment after um, that mm-hmm. movie came out um, here on the show. And then you later had a chance to interview Michael Uslan, the uh, EP on the executive producer on every Batman film and show since 1989. So it was a really cool moment for it me was. Um, to watch you do that. Uh, Nate, what was the moment of seeing the Batman actually live up to your expectations? What was that like for you? It was because you mean, I was were visibly I was, nervous as it I was started. Very, very nervous. And then they, you know, they started playing the the, the pre show stuff. You know, the pre show oh, yeah. IMAX stuff. And I'm like, how we were in the I'm premiere? Like, yeah. And and no, no, no. I was like, I was. Oh like, yeah, the oh, premieres sure. were happening all over the country. Yeah, right? but they had like the pre show playing. You know, that you, you step into a world thing that they they do right before the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. I was yeah. very excited. I'm like, okay, we're about to get it. And then they hit you with the ten minute timer that we're going to be having. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so. And then it started, you know, we got closer and closer, and then we hit, hit with another pre-show. But then the movie actually started at that point, and I was still very nervous. And then we started watching it, and it kept going, and it was about right after the introduction scene of the Batman, you know, mm-hmm. when he fights all the people in the alleyway, mm-hmm. right at the subway, I decided, I'm like, okay, we're fine. <laughs> I'm like, we'll be fine. This is going to be a great movie. And it just kept getting better and better. And it it never gets old, which there's always always something fun about it that you can watch. And That's it's awesome. just, yeah, it was, it was 
great to see it and then we went to go see it again like what the two, two nights, nights later, later. Yeah. and then we had to go see i went to go see it again at least the next night next night and yeah. then the next night <laughs> i think and you just, saw it like five i think i saw it yeah yeah so um, yeah it was it's a great movie i it was great yeah sam what was your uh what was it like for you watching your brother have that moment uh fulfilled for yeah him? i mean you could feel the energy in the room as it got closer and closer to time um and i could see that you know, Nathan, he doesn't let on about that sort of thing. He definitely, he keeps his emotions very, very, uh, in check, but I could tell he was, he was tense about his it. His leg was just shaking like yeah. crazy. And, and I don't blame yeah. him because it, it's been a while since DC's really done something well. And, and you know, he, there's a lot riding on this. It looked great from the trailers. It had a great director set up for it. Um, you know, it had everything going for it, but there's still that chance that it might not work. Um, and I remember talking to Nathan right after the, um, that introduction scene when he was talking about the shadows and stuff. I'm like, they nailed it. They, they got it right. <laughs> and we were both like, yeah, just, just excited the whole, the whole rest of the film. That's so. pretty awesome for my TV. Uh, Sam, you and me are going to be on the same page. Hey. On this one. Um, I actually had Obi-Wan Kenobi at the top of my list until I started to kind of flesh out the reasons why. And then it became really clear for me that it's season one of the uh, rings <laughs> of power. Um, while I loved seeing uh, Ewan and Hayden reprise their roles in Kenobi, the payoff and in season. the rings yeah. of, of and Liam that was Right. Yeah. Um, the, but the payoff in the rings of power was so magnificent um, that it has to be my favorite TV moment of 2023. 2023? Uh, 22. I did that on the run years too. Yeah, I'm just already 22. taking a hit. 22. Uh, it's going to be hard to surpass it in 2023, I guess. Um, uh, no, uh, that season one finale had everything one could hope for um, with the revelation that the stranger is in fact Gandalf. Mm-hmm. What? Spoilers. And that Halbrand was Sauron mm-hmm. and it fooled everyone, including Galadriel um, with that. I looking back at this. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's true. We figured it out. Uh, looking back on this episode, Sam, why are these moments so special? Well, a lot of it is the speculation. You know, we had weeks to sit there and 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 throw argue, out theories debate and argue. It. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Nathan and I were sitting there analyzing the the score, trying to figure out who the characters were. I mean, we were all in with it, um, and that's part of the fun about these. But that's also series. the danger. Absolutely, yeah. We had head cannon, and if it didn't work out, you know that's that's a dangerous thing. But fortunately, we're all usually pretty loose with our head cannon, so if it doesn't work out, we're cool with it. But I absolutely love the way this turned out. I think the stranger being Gandalf was set up perfectly and executed no. even better in the in the end um, when he was fighting those witches or whatever. That was just yeah. But they did, they did me wrong though. Oh, they, the way they started that episode, <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember just looking at you. Right? Right, as it I was visibly you were angry. At me and angry. You were just. <laughs> I've never seen him get angry at something. My like head that. cannon head was damaging. And me I, in that I mean, moment. you just had like, like you couldn't the even have like a dead frown on your face. I was you just so were, mad. You were just focused, and you just looked irritated, Pissed. just completely irritated. And you're just uh, like, I don't want to watch this. They kept the anymore. twists going until the very end. Uh, no, though. I'm, you, you were such a voice of reason, even across the room. You, you were just were. like, it's going to be okay. Just, be, just yeah, a lot on. of episodes. A lot of episode left. This is too early. They wouldn't episode. reveal it this early um, if it wasn't for a reason. Uh, what did you think about the the, the payoff on that, on it that was, season? It was a great episode. I mean, there was so much in that episode that was, was callbacks to what happened before and call forwards to what will happen and with especially with Gladriel and Sauron and Halbrand and, and it was great to see Gandalf kind of stepping into that role a little bit more, especially at the end when he was talking with Nori and mm. you know, follow your nose and all that, which was he started acting like Gandalf. Yeah, acting like Gandalf, and I cannot wait to see more of that Gandalf again, uh, especially interacting with Nori and how he becomes so in tuned and uh, interested with the hobbits yeah. mm-hmm. later on. The Harfoots, the Harfoots. You can almost say, if you say it imp- incorrectly, it sounds like hobbits. Harfoot. Whoa. Harfoot. Hobbit. Hart. Harfoot. Harfoot. Hart. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Anyway. All right. Let's talk about my favorite moment of the year. Uh, it was obviously, you brought it up too, Sam, but it's yeah, the we world were, premiere. We were just in sync. We, we were. Well, yeah, all of us were. Uh, it's kind of hard to believe um, that we haven't actually recorded an episode since that yeah. um, moment. Um, but this is, uh, without a doubt, my most special moment for 2022. After five years 
of recording this podcast. It felt like a very special way to wrap up a half of a decade of podcasts. You crazy. thought about it like that? No, it that's feels, weird. It makes you way. feel so old. Uh, like the show has been around forever. Well, yeah, it has. And in podcasting us. world, it's like podcasting years are like dog years. So we're like 45 years old um, at this point. No, no. Um, you are 45 years old. No, I'm 47. Uh, oh, anyway, um, what was it like? You know, I know we talked about it, but. Um, for you know, kind of go back if you could if you could go back to December 2017. All right, Sam, you're 16, Nate, you're 12. Ugh. Right, Ugh. we're starting this, we're trying to find our way through a show. Um, all of this kind of stuff's going on. We're watching <laughs> the red carpet of The Last Jedi. Oh, and, yeah, you know, yeah. Danzy's there, and people from Star Wars News uh, Net or um, the Resistance Broadcast are there, and other people we know are there um, for this. Um, if you could go back to that, Sam, or that Nate, um, and tell them one thing about this podcasting journey, like one piece of, of advice or thing to, to, uh, what would you say? What would you say to yourself from five years, five years ago about podcasting and about what would happen? I mean, I guess for me, it's not about the podcast. It's about the, the conversations and the relationships that happen. I mean, I love doing the podcast. It's it's sure. it's great. But part of the f- the the fun of it is going to things like celebration mm-hmm. and talking with the people who we know through the podcast. Um and just being able to go to celebration and and experience that and then talk about it on the podcast or go to the Willow premiere and experience that and then talk about it on the podcast. It's about the experiences and the relationships that come from doing this and to really like focus on those like that's what what i would it's uh, funny because we were you know even even in that that vein we're at disney world on vacation a few weeks couple weeks ago we're getting ready to board hollywood tower terror for the very first time and there's this family off to the side waiting to board the same one as we are and we got all lagged in there and then all of a sudden i hear this woman say sammy and nathan and you, she knew you guys mm-hmm. through the homeschool academy in mm-hmm. Colorado. Mm-hmm. She was one of your teachers and all of that. But she introduced herself. And when she did, I knew her through the podcast right. community because she's followed our show. She mm-hmm. comments on everything we do on Facebook, mm-hmm. on our page, and and all of those types of things. And it was just really weird for me to have that kind of moment where I'm like, this person knows you guys, but I know this person through a different vein. through the podcast. Yeah. Um, with it. So it's very similar to that. What, what would you say to yourself five years ago? Little BB Nate (sighs) opening up the show. Yeah. Scared. Having to read his intro. Don't Um, be scared to ask a question about the pork. Yeah. That's what you got to tell me. Well, yeah. What would you say to yourself? I I guess just be okay to like dive deep into the fandom that you, you enjoy. I Mm. mean, at that point I was starting to get into comics. Just starting. Yeah. Just starting because we had comics for five minutes away and how I envy that. (laughs) Oh yeah. We have our, our best comic book store are really the best went around I mean, it was at a least five minute 45 walk. 50 minutes yeah it, it was great but uh i was getting into it there and it was just back then i was like okay well i'll i'll, I'll be casual in the fandom but I, diving deep into what it means and what the themes are and what the characters mm-hmm. are and character studies and all that stuff is really fun and it's important and so i just wish i kind of started looking at that a little bit sooner so i could be more in tuned with it and understand mm-hmm. it a little bit better but no I'm, I'm always happy to look dive deeper into yeah. movies and characters in those movies and all that stuff that's pretty cool you know for me um i would go back and i would tell myself that there's no way that you are ever going to believe yeah. what's going to happen over the next five seriously years. though and just enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Just enjoy this, this ride. Just have fun with it. And you're right, Sam, the podcast recording and the prep time and all that stuff that we put into this, that's the work right, of this, right? Mm-hmm. That's the hard part of this. Um, the payoff is the Willow premiere. It's Turbis. It's Michael Uslin. It's, you know, all of the different things, the that, people, the people too. and the yeah. relationships, yeah. right? It's, it's, it's being able to, uh, it, it is, it is going to Star Wars celebration. And it's, Lucas, it's me getting a text from, yeah, go. Luke 
was picking Nathan and I up from the airport when we were going to youth choir because he's in town and we only know him because of this podcast. He's right. awesome. Now we're connected with him on Facebook and all that. You know, it's it's things like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's um it's it's a really fun experience. So for all of you that um, maybe are early in your podcasting journey or your content creation journey, or maybe you're considering your own thing, I'm just going to give you the same advice I'd give myself uh, five years ago. It's do it and then just enjoy it mm-hmm. every step of the way. So, um, all right, things I'm looking forward to in 2023. This is a long episode, but I don't care. Um, all right. Hey, um, we're making up for the lack of episodes. We sure are. Um, uh, first thing I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to is uh, Ahsoka. Um, as a Star Wars super fan, I'm honestly shocked um, that I didn't have a Star Wars production in my top three from 2022. Um, and it's not that I didn't love The Bad Batch or The Book of Boba Fett or Kenobi or Andor or everything else that we got. I really did. They were all amazing. But I I'm confident that 2023 will be dominated by my love for Star Wars beginning with Ahsoka. Um, we know it's going to basically be a live action continuation of Star Wars Rebels mm-hmm. um, with that. So do I need to say anything more, BB Nate? How pumped are you for, for Ahsoka? It's about dang time. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's I'm, I'm so excited for it. I can't. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm super excited for it and I can't wait for it to get here and I can't wait to see what happens. But then I'm like, OK, it'll well, be over. It'll be over. And they'll most likely abandon the characters pretty soon here again. And I don't want to have to go through that again. And maybe you get a spinoff series. Maybe, at some point. maybe a, a, a forever long running. Yeah, eventually series, the stories know? end. Yeah, you're but right. I, I can't wait for it. It's going to be amazing. They have the cast already is great. I mean, we already have Ezra, who is going to be great. Uh, he looks like a grown up Ezra Sabine mm. spinning image. Yeah. Uh, of course we have Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka. I think I think we got Hera pretty like last the rumor of Hera. It's a pretty strong rumor. Who is it? It's it, um, it's Ewan McGregor's wife. Mary actually. Mary Elizabeth Winstead. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, isn't there strong rumors about Thrawn? Isn't it? It's yeah, it's been pretty Lars much not Nichols. confirmed, but it's pretty it's, much well accepted. It will be Lars. Thank uh, you. So that reprising already, it in live action. That so. makes me like there's no more doubts that I know this series is going to be great because that's the one thing I wanted is for him to play Thrawn. And this is like Dave Filoni's pet project. Yeah. This is, baby. This is, this is his. Well, it's his, his favorite character. It's so I, you know, he's going to pour all of his love and everything that he can do into this movie and this is a show and it'll be great there's one thing clone wars did not get a live action continuation i know this isn't rebels season five it doesn't it's not said that that's what it is but that's basically what this is and it's in live action no other series got that no no clone wars got the bad batch right rebels it's Ahsoka. Right. All right. Enough Clone, of that. Clone Wars um, got episode three. Revenge of the Sith. That's what it got. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So um, we know next to uh, nothing about the, the show Skeleton Crew, but I'm excited about that. Uh, um, all we know really is that it stars Jude Law. And it's set in the Your new... doppelganger, right? My doppelganger. Apparently. That's what some people think. I don't. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's fun to say it. Um, anyway, um, it's set in the New Republic era. Um, and it's about a group of kids lost in the Star Wars galaxy trying to find their way home, which I now when I read that line, it makes me do, feel like things. It, it well, no, it makes me think about Ezra and, and Thrawn it, being in an area. Um, I'm yeah. not I'm, I'm not crazy. Not, you're not. Well, you're, you're you are. But that's OK. okay. Um, but it's um, it's also the fact that uh, we don't have anything more about it than that. What I just read that makes it so exciting. Um, we knew what we were getting with Boba Fett. We knew what we were getting with Kenobi. We knew basically what we were getting with an Andor series um, with it. This is going to be fresh. It's going to be different. And I'm ready to see what happens um, with it. So, Sam, how are you feeling about getting new Star Wars content that isn't tied to an already established character? Well, I mean, we've gotten this with Mando before and it sure it worked I mean, it, it was a huge success because um, of Baby Yoda. <laughs> well, yes, but it, well, that isn't an established no, character problem, either. No. Um, so I'm not saying that this will be as successful as Mando, and it probably won't, but it could surprise us. I'm excited because that's where new possibilities lie is with new content. Um, you know, The Mandalorian was so successful that it spawned this whole mini Mandoverse kind of thing. There's, I mean, I know this is kind of in the Mandoverse, but it, this has the potential to do something similar to that. Um, so I'm super excited to see what new things could come from this. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I think my theory's correct. <laughs> oh, we, do, it's Morton. got merit. But I'm excited to see kind of this this new style of Star Wars show. I mean, we've we've gotten Mando and Book of Boba Fett, which are very similar to each other, and yes. Andor, which is completely different than what we've seen in Star Wars before. And it's kind of just... And then, of course, all the animated shows are very similar to each other. But this is kind of a different feel. I mean, it, it does feel a little bit like Goonies or Stranger Things with the group of kids and then the mm-hmm. Jude Law coming in to help lead them. It kind of feels like that. But... In Star Wars, it's going to be different and exciting to see that. And I'm interested in seeing how this ties into the larger story. I mean, we can't just have a random we can't just have a random show that's yeah. set in the Star Wars universe. It while I wouldn't mind seeing some of the hustle and bustle of Star Wars life, that's not what this is being portrayed as. It has to have some meaning. And do we know if John Favreau and Dave Filoni are working on this? Um, they are. No, it's John Watts. Oh, okay, yeah. So, oh, yeah. He already has Spider Man, yeah, and yeah, I don't know, home and homecoming. Great, and all that. Yeah. great director behind. It. So, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. But of course, awesome. I'll, I'll watch it. Oh, yeah. Well, it's Star Wars, right? So, right. Um, last one. Finally, I'm kind of surprised to say this, um, but one of the things that I'm looking forward to the most in 2023 is actually from DC, and it isn't Shazam Two. Whoa. Whoa. Um, it's the flash um, wow. with all of the chaos in the DC universe and so many of the films and shows being canceled. The flash has gone wired largely unscathed, which is very Somehow. surprising uh, with Ezra Miller's insanity right. um, uh, with this. Um, in fact, it's been reported that James Gunn and Peter Safran haven't asked for any major changes to the film other than eliminating the cameos for Superman and Wonder Woman. So I'm very intrigued uh, by this BB Nate in 90 seconds. Why can this film work in spite of all the shakeup in DC? Because we originally heard when this movie was coming out that it was probably going to be a reset, reboot of the series. And so they're probably going to make a couple changes to the film to change it to what they're wanting for the DCU. But overall, they're probably just going to let it be what the movie was going to be and just add a couple different story points here and there to lead it in the right direction. Um, We'll see how it works, if it works out, how the movie actually is. But I'm excited to see how they reset it because the Flash can do what he want with time and resetting because he's done it before in the comics. He does it all the time. I mean, we... He's done it in the CW. He's... That's all this the Arrowverse is. It feels right? like it feels like everything is just him resetting things and, and then it going wrong and then finding somebody faster than him and then beating that person <laughs> right. faster than exactly. him. So, so it's just I'm excited to see where we go from this reset yeah i'm more interested to see the fan response to this after all of the chaos not only with ezra miller but But just the the dc yes stuff um i'm hopeful for it because i loved that version of the flash in the snyder cut I think it was the standout character. I agree. And the end scene where he runs back through time to, re- to here we go, reset everything, um, was one of the coolest scenes in movies mm. I've seen. Um, so I'm very excited to see that. Plus, you got the return of uh, Michael Keaton's Batman. Right, right. The variants, for lack of a better term, got, of um, uh, Flash. Is that what they're the called? Supergirl, in DC? or not Supergirl? It's I, is it Supergirl? It's, just, it's not. Yeah, Supergirl. It's, it's Supergirl. Okay, yeah, but not her. the CW Supergirl. No, it's um, just there. There are other versions of the character. Mm-hmm. It's still the Flash. It's okay. just have a different version. Yeah. So I'm I'm super interested to see where they go. Do we know who the villain is? Is no. there a villain? I it's, think the, it's Ezra Miller's probably the villain. time. <laughs> the villain's probably time. Yeah, like just time a character itself. time or time in general. Just time itself. That's really cool. Black just, Ray, the, probably the Black Racer will show up. Who? Yeah, that'll be fun. Very that'll cool. be awesome. Well, um, we'll close this thing off before we get to anything else and all that with the dad moment. I am your father. So the older I get, uh, the more I realize that I'm most happy uh, when those closest to me are happy. And as I look back on 2022 and the things that I love the most, they seem to center on watching Nathan uh, interview Michael Uslan and then Sam finally getting a new Lord of the Rings trilogy that exceeded his expectations. (laughs) Um, And then everything culminated in our entire family, Christy included my wife and their mom uh, attending the Hollywood premiere of Willow, the series. Um, This podcast has always been about having opportunities for us to grow closer. Um, 2022 was no exception. And while we look forward to the new year, um, it is 
Uh, it's really easy to think about new releases, and I'm confident, though, um, that we'll love all of those. But 365 days from now, the highlights will probably be more focused on what we experience together than they are on what happens in all of our favorite franchises. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to see Mm -hmm. what 2023 holds in store. Um, Star Wars, Marvel, DC, and so many other stories are going to dominate the cinema and streaming in 2023. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, trying to take it all in. And like I said, especially March. So, all right. uh, Anything else you guys want to talk about? Anything else? Yeah. uh, Amazon says the rings of power has more than paid off (laughs) and they tease bigger battles in season two. So take that haters. Um, (laughs) I was, I'm honest. I was uh, worried that they would consider it not successful enough and not continue the story, which I definitely don't want because I want right. all of this as, of course. Al- as much as possible. So hearing that they consider it as more than paid off is it's a exciting. huge relief. That's to going to be great. Yes. Be James Gunn confirms Elseworlds movies in development outside the DCU. This mm. means what Joker 2. This means the Batman stuff. This is the Elseworlds stories. It's what does Elseworlds mean, though? Different timelines, different universes that could have taken place, could have not taken place. We aren't really sure. It's the what They're, if of DC, basically. Yes. There's stories that we've heard that the And this is a common thing of. in, Cure, in yes. the comics. It used to be a whole line in the 90s and early 2000s. A lot of great comics came from that, including Gotham by Gaslight was an awesome story. Oh, yeah, that was story. a great one. Um, Batman Speeding Bullet, which is a huge deal. It's uh, where Superman lands in Gotham instead of in Kansas huh. and, and Smallville. So he becomes, he becomes Batman. Batman with superpowers. Yes, it's really cool. It's an awesome comic. And, sounds cool. That sounds yeah, really that's interesting. interesting. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, Star Wars fans thinks that think that the Perseverance rover left a lightsaber on Mars. So what? It, uh, they they went through and they've been combing through photos mm-hmm. um, from that and there's laying there it looks literally like like kind of a, a hilt to Luke's a Return of the Jedi lightsaber or something like that huh. I mean it's that shape it's got the end all, end piece on it and and everything else which doesn't surprise me because Star Wars stole from all of these junk things in order to make right, stuff yes. so it's a bracket from some machine or something right, that yeah. fell off but uh, but it's fun um, real quick uh, thank you guys again so much for listening to the show and for being a part of the Tatooine Sons family I hope you can hear from what we talked about um, over this episode uh, yeah over the, throughout this episode um, about how much we love doing this we love being a part of this and how much we love you know our, our interactions and our and our relationships and, and connecting with you guys uh, on it. Um, the reality is schedules have gotten harder and harder and 2023 is going to get even worse. Um, if any of you that have gone to university, you know, junior year is the hardest, sem- uh, hardest year of university and second semester junior year tends to be the hardest one. And Sam's got a ton of stuff um, that's going on. He works so hard on that. We want to make sure he has space um, to do that. So uh, in addition to that, with work stuff and everything else, we're going to, we're going to um, Nathan, you're taking three college classes and you're still in junior in high school. So yeah. um, with that, it's going to be a busy Busy, busy year. So we're making some changes to the show in 2023. We're moving from a weekly um, series to monthly releases for this show, the one that you're used to, the Tatooine Sons, the big show where we all three talk about different subjects and everything that you experienced uh, even on this episode. So that's going to be happening on the first Tuesdays of every single month beginning next Tuesday, January. Is it the third, I guess, is when, I guess that, so. when yes. that comes out. So January 3rd um, with that. In the meantime, we're going to be filling in the weeks between the interview episodes um, or between that that big show with some maybe some interview episodes some other opportunities different things that we're going to be doing Um, (laughs) we're going to be working with this and then we're in the process of working on the technical pieces of it to do it in a way that doesn't uh, swallow up more uh, significant amounts of time, but allows us to do some video um, with the show, and and it has uh, this top quality. So stay tuned on that. We're going to be doing those uh, things. But again, 2022 was amazing. Thank mm-hmm. you for being a part of that with us. Um, with this, thank you so much uh, for listening uh, to Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast. Yes, if you had a good time listening, it would be awesome if you could share this with friends, family, or anybody. Yeah, and uh, total strangers too. Yeah, so yeah, just go, just walk up to somebody and tell them, "Do you listen street. to podcasts?" Yeah, that'd so, be great. Yeah, right. um, and of course, the show is only a small part of the Tatooine Sons world. Um, so if you want to accost strangers and tell them about our Facebook and Twitter, you can do that as well. Um, and keep up to date with everything we've got going on at TatooineSons dot com as well. That's right. Don't forget to follow the show on your favorite podcast app so that you don't miss our next episode and give us a review on Apple Podcasts or a rating on Spotify or whatever podcast app you prefer. Uh, Anything else you guys would like to say, gentlemen? May the force be with you. May the force be with you. May the force be with you, always. This party's over. 
like that monkey. Don't get technical with me. 